dog or escape. Go. Good. So instead of the toy, you're now the toy. I'm the toy. I don't want to be the toy. We're at Southern K9, a dog training facility where people from all over the world come to buy dogs and learn how to handle them in the field. Most of the dogs being trained here are for police departments. There are 50,000 dogs working with cops in America today. Many of them are used for searching or rooting out contraband. But a lot of them are used to chase down and apprehend suspects as part of specialized canine units. He is tearing my leg. And while they haven't gotten nearly as much attention as other weapons in the hands of police, they can cause just as much damage. Terrell Bradley lost his right eye last year when he was attacked by a dog with the Gainesville Police Department. He'd been pulled over for failure to yield, but fled after police say they saw marijuana in the car. The cops say they brought out the dog after they spotted a handgun in his car. The dog's not coming off to you. Come out to me. Come out to me. He got me, bro. I'm done. I'm done. I was laying still as a slab of meat on the ground. All they saying is stop moving, stop moving, stop resisting. And you not moving or resisting? Not moving or resisting. And they had to, to pry the dog off you? Mm-hmm. What did they tell you the reason was for them sticking the dog on you? They ain't tell me no reason. It's just always been, if they got to call their dogs, they ain't putting them up till they get them a bite. That's just games, Black Lives Matter! After what happened to Bradley, protesters in Gainesville demanded that the city shut down its canine unit. The department initially said the cops involved had followed protocol, but the chief promised he'd look into it. We will review every minute of video. And if we find, if we find, if we find inappropriate, find inappropriate activity on those videos, we'll take appropriate actions. In the end, only two officers were suspended. Not for what happened to Bradley, but for joking about his injuries in a text message. Plots. Ed Ratliff spent 13 years as a cop in Gainesville, two of them with the K-9 unit. So is it that he responds to that command with indifference to who's giving it or just nah, because you giving it? Just me. Push. He's currently suing the department, alleging that racism and slurs were an everyday part of the job, as was a culture of looking for chances to let their dogs bite people. That unit was allowed to just run wild and do whatever they wanted to do with zero accountability for years since I've been there. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, the stigma is that you have to go to the east side to go get dog bites. Are you saying in the GPD, it was kind of understood that if you wanted to get dog bites, you go to where the black people live? There used to be a saying, you don't go west of Main Street. That's, that's, the, that's the medium. Like that's the railroad it. tracks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, you're not looking for crime. You're looking for someone that you can victimize and go put in the hospital and glorify. What would you say is the crux of your story when it comes to your experience with the Gainesville Police Department? It's not policing as a whole. It's not the majority of the officers. It's these little subcultures within the department. They're usually like a K-9 unit or like a specialty unit. You float under the radar. Do you think there's a problem in the Gainesville Police Department with racist handlers of police dogs? Absolutely. It's a huge problem. That's, that's part of why you see the disproportionate numbers. We requested data from Gainesville about their K-9 unit, 
and learned that between 2017 and 2022, 85% of dog bite injuries in the city were inflicted on black males. That squares with research from the Marshall Project and others, which shows that between 2005 and 2013, police dog bites sent roughly 3,600 Americans to emergency rooms every year, the majority of them black. Kenneth Nunn studies police practices at the University of Florida. He says it's always been like that. I think that a police dog is no different than other dangerous weapons, such as uh, guns, revolvers, uh, shotguns, etc. When I think of police dogs, I can't help but to think about the civil rights movement, sticking dogs on folks in right. protest. These dogs were used to intimidate people who were struggling and fighting for their human rights here in this country. I know there are many people in the African-American communities that have had to struggle for justice and fight for justice who are terrified of these dogs because of the use that they had. Do you think police departments should be training dogs to attack human beings? I do not. I think that is both an animal rights concern and a human rights concern. We should not be training these creatures to be violent and to be dangerous toward other living beings, in this case, humans. And I just think that we need to stop thinking that these dogs are lassie. Police departments will prop them up and dress them up in Halloween costumes, make sure. them look cute. And... Absolutely. And, and that's OK, yeah. you know, but we have to understand that that's propaganda. Although the Gainesville police did temporarily pause its canine unit, in March, Chief Scott decided to bring it back under his control. They can only be deployed with my authorization and only for enforceable felonies. We were supposed to talk to him about it, but he canceled at the last minute. So we found him at a city council meeting. We are going to take a short recess until 3.20, and we will come back and get out for the afternoon. How you doing? I'm all right. My name is Alzo Slade. I'm with Vice News. Mm -hmm. I was looking forward to, to our meeting yesterday, but you had to cancel. I was wondering if you had a few minutes to chat with me really quick. All right, man. All right, man. It's, a, it's, a, it's important. It's about, it's about police dogs. Not right and now. So when, 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 when would you be able to chat with me? Some other cities, like St. Paul and Salt Lake City, have started to make changes to how and when their officers can use police dogs. And for the first time ever, lawmakers in one state, California, are considering a bill that would ban the use of dogs in apprehensions, arrests, and protests. But there's still no national standards for police canines and their handlers. Push, push, push. Oh, right here, Baba. This right here is just, this is playtime for the dog, so he yeah. just did all that obedience and everything for him. So now this is this like is the dog's reward. release, yeah. Okay. Trainers like Jack Murray at Southern Coast K-9 say the programs are worth keeping around. What do you think is one of the biggest benefits of having one of, one of your dogs, or just a, a police dog? It's a huge safety deal, uh, where you can put a dog in the, in the woods to find a suspect, as opposed to sending guys in there by themselves. You know, dogs can take care of like, uh, Somebody that's in a building that don't want to come out just by giving some canine warnings, people give up. A lot of times if the dogs are on the scene, people don't run. The, the dogs are huge, huge, huge de-escalating tools. What I saw today, when they when they had that arm on and that suit, you had the, the dog like drooling from the fangs. Man, that's a vicious sight. So here, here's the thing. It was violent. I could show you the same thing with a toy. Yeah, but you train them to replace that rubber toy with a human being. No, no. The dog has no anger towards that sleeve. When that guy is in the sleeve, that's like playtime for the dog. When I come here and I see you guys training them to be obedient, like sniffing, searching, all that makes sense. Very good. I think it's the biting that people have an issue with. Do you find that problematic in, in any, any way? Anything could be problematic. Yeah. A police car could be problematic. A yeah. gun could be problematic. It, it starts with proper handler selection. When you get a person that's responsible, uses force wisely, can yeah. actually make, make the right decisions, 
Uh, if you don't, you can have problems. When it was fresh, like when it first happened, I used to like wake up in the middle of the night, like just shaking, I just jump up, like thinking something on me. How did it change you? How have it changed me? And you know, obviously I got one eye, so that changed everything. Do you think the K9 unit here should be disbanded? I feel like it really ain't no need for the dogs now, because I feel like there's officers around here, they have the wrong motives with the dogs. When they hear my case, I at least want people to know like, Okay, they did get held to, you know, accountable for what they did. I'm Michael Learmonth, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts, not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free but we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.